The Cincinnati Bengals coming to 2018 looking to get back to their winning ways having missed the playoffs the last two seasons. Both head coach Marvin Lewis and quarterback Andy Dalton are looking to bring a championship to the Queen City before it's all said and done. Is there enough ammo to make this happen this year? We'll explore that possibility and more in our 2018 Cincinnati Bengals season preview. Take a look at some of the key storylines heading into the season as we go into our four minute offense. The Bengals brought in a new defensive coordinator in Terrell Austin, who spent the last four seasons in the same position with the Detroit Lions. Now, Austin comes in with a track record of success and definitely has a ton of good pieces to, in place to work with. The goal is to restore the roar to a defense that fell to the middle of the pack last year and was not good versus the run. Head coach Marvin Lewis wanted to go in a new direction on both sides of the ball, making the offensive move early into last year by naming Bill Lazor as the OC after week two. Another big change we've seen this offseason from the Cincinnati Bengals is along the offensive line. Gone is Andre Smith, and in comes Cordy Glenn via free agency. Gone is Russell Boding at center, and in comes first-round draft pick Billy Price out of Ohio State. And there is some competition for the right guard spot as well between some up-and-comers that are currently on the roster. You can tell this was a major point of emphasis for the Bengals as they had no choice but to make changes after finishing last year 31st in rushing. When the Bengals were consistently in the playoffs, they could always count on a dependable ground game with some of the changes that were made the hope is that is something that returns in 2018 and in an expected move this offseason the Bengals chose not to resign running back Jeremy Hill which means Joe Mixon is now the starter at tailback this upcoming season now there's going to be a lot of eyes on the second year pro out of Oklahoma to see if the move to draft him and to jettison Hill was definitely worth it I will say this though now as a starter and knowing that you're going to get those consistent carries it allows you as a runner to be much more patient much more under control and you'll begin to feel the defense out a lot better all of which will yield much better production from a yards per carry standpoint and obviously a yardage standpoint this will also help with a back's vision as well last year he finished as the team's leading rusher with a modest three and a half yards per carry average i think this year as a full-time guy you'll see that number jump almost a full yard this season the Cincinnati Bengals hope that in 2018 they can get a full, healthy 16 games out of two key offensive playmakers in tight end Tyler Eifert and wide receiver John Ross. Eifert hasn't played a full season since he's been in the NFL, so the hope is that he bucks that trend this upcoming year, which could make the Bengals really strong at the tight end position from a depth perspective. In Ross, Ross's case, despite dealing with nagging injuries all last year, he was also put in a witness protection program as well. The hope is that for him, is he can become the dynamic deep threat that they need to take pressure off of the veteran A.J. Green. The offense can be extremely productive if they can get a full season out of both guys this upcoming year. One of the reasons for optimism for the Cincinnati Bengals is quarterback Andy Dalton. He's been a consistent player for Cincinnati over the course of his career. I know he's not the most popular player nationally, but if we're being honest, if he wasn't a good quarterback, the Bengals wouldn't have made as many playoff appearances with him at the helm. Obviously, you want him and this team to take the next step and perform well in the playoffs and actually win a game. But you have to get there in order to have a chance to do that. And I feel like Dalton is that guy to lead that team to that spot. And he's done that for them multiple times in his career. There can be a lot of optimism as well about the two defensive standouts in Carlos Dunlap and Geno Atkins. Both guys are premier players and are amongst the best in the NFL at their position. And as long as they're out there healthy for a full 16 games, you can have a ton of optimism about the defensive line. But there's also some budding stars on this side of the ball as well that bring a lot of optimism about the upcoming season. Second year players in defensive end Jordan Willis and edge player Carl Lawson showed a lot of promise as rookies last year when given the opportunity. And third year cornerback William William Jackson III has already entered the discussion of being one of the best at his position. These three players, in conjunction with what they already have on the roster and in the fold, is going to make life a lot easier for new defensive coordinator Terrell Austin. Staying on the defensive side of the ball, the linebacking core looks good too. I know Vontez Burfick is going to miss some time with suspension, but when he returns, he'll have an impact. I'm mostly talking about players like Nick Vigil, free agent signing Preston Brown, and rookie third round pick Malik Jefferson. To be honest, that could be a formidable starting three right there. Plus, you add in Jordan Evans and the veteran Vincent Ray, and now you have some solid depth at the second level. A cause for concern would be the cohesiveness in the passing game. The Bengals definitely have the perimeter talent at receiver and also at tight end, but it's all about putting the guys in position to be successful and making sure the role is defined 
so that way the cohesiveness you need to thrive is definitely formed. When you're constantly in flux, none of this happens and the passing game lacks continuity, which stymies growth of the offense as a whole. The offensive line would also give me calls for pause only because of the new pieces and how they'll gel together. Plus, you still have to figure out some of the spots up front. Again, just like the receiver position, the talent is there. It's just about finding who's going to settle in where and let those guys blossom. Now here are some quick Bengals takes as they head into training camp. Look for Tyler Boyd and Carl Lawson to have breakout seasons. We know Boyd will never have to pay for another Buffalo wing in Buffalo for as long as he lives after his late season score against the Ravens to put the Bills into the playoffs. But he's trending upwards and hopefully he's healthy enough to reach that potential that we saw from him back at Pitt. Lawson proved to be a problem for all offensive tackles last year and I don't think that's going to change anytime soon. Look for Terrell Austin to utilize his skill set a lot which could see him push for Pro Bowl honors this season. Two rookies I feel as though will be training camp surprises, and that will be running back Mark Walton and safety Trayvon Henderson, who's an undrafted free agent out of Hawaii. Walton's fluid running style will draw a lot of oohs and ahs during training camp and in the preseason, and Henderson's versatility as a matchup safety with ball skills will have him turning heads all throughout camp. Impact rookies this year will be Billy Price and Malik Jefferson. We know Price will start and subsequently help jumpstart that Bengals ground game. He already makes them better on the inside. Jefferson can end up starting by season's end. His athleticism and range makes him an ideal weak side linebacker in my opinion, and he has a nose for the football. Now, from a fantasy football perspective, it's okay now to buy Joe Mixon. As a starter, he'll prove to be more valuable to your squad as opposed to last season. I would also tag a second or third round value on him in your fantasy drafts. The road to the Super Bowl for the Bengals goes as follows. Joe Mixon rushes for over 1,200 yards. That would mean that the Bengals are closing out games and playing winning football. Anything he does in a passing game would actually be icing on the cake. The defense also has to become top 10. And if we're being honest, from where I'm sitting, it's definitely plausible with the talent on the roster and with Terrell Austin calling the shots. This could definitely happen, but it has to happen if they want to get to Atlanta. And, and finally, if the receiving core plays like it's 2005 and 2006, the Bengals definitely will be cooking with gas this upcoming season. That's back when the Bengals were explosive, they were dynamic, and they were a tough matchup each and every week for every team that they face. If the passing game can resemble that with all of the talented options on the roster, then Cincinnati can punch their ticket to the big game. I have the Bengals finishing third in the AFC North. Very tough division as always, and when the Bengals were in contention for first place, they were more solid in every aspect of their team. There are still some slight questions about the offensive line and the still yet to be seen run game with Joe Mixon and the wait and see approach with some of the receiving options. So to be honest, the surest thing about the Bengals, in my opinion, this upcoming year will be that their defense will be vastly improved over last season. And if the offense is as well, then things could get very interesting in the Queen City. So that's it for our 2018 NFL season team preview. Be sure to follow me on all of our social media accounts. Also check out and subscribe on iTunes to Football Game Plan Podcast and to find other NFL team previews for our 2018 NFL season kickoff. Visit the YouTube channel at youtube.com slash football game plan and click that subscribe button.